The term splits generally means an output file from Premiere Pro that has multiple audio tracks, and each of those audio tracks contains a specific part of the audio mix. For example, a very common workflow is to deliver splits with dialogue on one set of tracks, music on a different set of tracks, and sound effects and ambient sounds on a third set of tracks. These split exports are often delivered to places like promo teams or people that have to recut the material and need to be able to access the dialogue independent of music and sound effects, or in some cases to add a different language track. It's easy to deliver splits inside of Premiere Pro, but the very first time you do it, it does require a little bit of setup work. This video is going to walk you through the two main parts of setting up the ability to deliver splits, and you can customize it to deliver exactly what you need. When you're working inside of Premiere Pro, it's important to understand the concept of what a master track is, because the master track determines exactly what type of audio you're mixing for when you're working inside of a sequence. You'll notice here on the uh, timeline that I'm working on right now, um, we've done a really good job of sort of segregating out the audio into various tracks. So all of the voiceover is on A1, uh, sound effects are on A2, through uh, A9, and then music is down on A10. Now, if I want to deliver this as, let's say, a six-channel file uh, with stereo voiceover, stereo sound effects, and stereo music on A1 and 2, A3 and 4, and A5 and 6, I need to have a master track that actually has six tracks associated with it. And by default, most people edit in a stereo timeline. You can notice if you look at the master track here, you'll notice that this little icon here denotes that this is a stereo master track. So delivering splits requires creating a new sequence and copying and pasting stuff over to that new sequence. Now, what I'm gonna show you is something that you can set up one time and then you have the ability to deliver the exact type of splits that you need. So in this example, again, I'm going to deliver a six channel split uh, with stereo voiceover, stereo sound effects, and stereo music. So I need six channels for A1 and 2, A3 and 4, A5 and 6. Each of those pairs are going to be a set of stereo uh, audio files. So we need to set up the timeline for this, and then we also need to set up an export preset. These two take a little bit of time the first time we set them up, but it's going to be uh, as simple as just selecting them from a drop-down menu moving forward in the future. To get started, I'm going to go ahead and click this new item button and choose to make a new sequence. And uh, I can pretty much pick any of these available presets here or just manually jump right into the settings tab and start changing the raster size and frame rate. But a really quick shortcut is just to pick one of these available presets as sort of a starting place that we can modify from. So I'm just going to go ahead and choose under 1080p the 1080p 23976 preset here just because by doing that I don't have to make any changes to the raster size or the time base here in the settings tab. From there, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the tracks because this is where we make the biggest changes. So looking at the existing sequence, first off, I need 10 tracks of audio. So I can go ahead and just add my 10 tracks here. And for the master track, rather than delivering as a stereo master, I need to be able to deliver as a multi-channel master. Now, by selecting multi-channel, I can pick and choose however many channels that I need to deliver to. So in this case, we're going to deliver six channel. And from here, I can start to go through and make assignments for each of these different channels. So to start with, channel one is going to be voiceover. And I can even come in here and actually rename these tracks by default to match what I had in the existing sequence. I can also as an aside, choose to load these from the sequence, and it's just going to save me a little bit of extra time here. You'll notice everything lines up at this point. All I have to do now is change the multi-channel back to a six-channel master. Now here's where it gets interesting. So we have to think about this. If we want to deliver the voiceover on one and two, we need to make sure that the output assignment for this track is set for one and two, which it is. Now, I want my sound effects on three and four. So this means for all of my effects tracks, I need to change this from one and two to three and four. We're just gonna go through and do these one at a time here. And with the magic of editing, we can speed this up quite a bit. So by doing this, we're basically creating sort of a submix 
where everything on those middle tracks is going to be mixed into a stereo pair that will be placed in Audio 3 and Audio 4 when I export out my file. Now lastly, under the music track, we want to assign music to 5 and 6. Now if I wanted to deliver or had to deliver mono tracks, I would have to use this pan control. You'll notice that uh, under output assignments, um, this shows that my output is going to go to 1 and 2. If I only wanted this to go to 1, what I would have to do is use this pan control to pan all the way to the left. And that way A1 would be a discrete mono track uh, with just the audio on a mono track. Fortunately here we recorded a lot of this in stereo, so I'm just going to keep everything as stereo pairs uh, to keep this fairly straightforward. But just know you can output mono. It's definitely possible. Uh, it just requires a mix of output assignments and a little bit of pan controls. Now once I've done this, I want to make sure and save this as a preset. So I'm going to go ahead and click on Save Preset. I'll just quickly call this one Splits. But normally I would put a detailed description in here, something to the effect of A1 and 2, voiceover, and so on and so forth. Once you've got your description written, go ahead and click OK. And this is going to show up under your sequence presets moving forward um, as a preset that you can just select to make a really easy copy and paste. So now underneath my custom settings, I can go ahead and create a new sequence, and I'm going to call this one Splits. Click OK. Now you'll notice that the audio looks very, very similar to what it did before, except for the audio track is now a six-channel master track. Uh, if we want to test this out and just make sure everything is working properly, it's not a bad idea to also bring up the audio track mixer at this point because the audio track mixer will actually show me at a glance what is assigned to which track and what the panning settings are set for. So here I can easily check and see A1 is assigned to 1 and 2 output. Uh, everything from A2 to A9 are assigned to 3 and 4 output. And then music, A10, is assigned to 5 and 6 output. So now all I need to do is come back to my original sequence, select all, copy it, jump to my splits, make sure I'm at the same starting timecode value, and paste everything in. Now by doing this, this should give me the ability to see and to actually solo out what is being played back where. So if I wanted to double check the music, I could click on this little solo button here for five and six and only listen to the music. Now that I've got my splits are set up here, I also need to set up an export preset for the same thing. So what I'm going to do here is go ahead and click on File, Export, Media. And under Export Options, I'm going to select a format that I know supports audio channelization. Now, your deliverable needs to be in a format that can support audio channelization. So things like QuickTime files are usually recommended. Um, certain other files will let you do multi-channel export, but it won't actually allow you to group things like uh, stereo pairs together or get discrete mono tracks. So uh, again, talk to the people for who you're delivering to. Just make sure if you're delivering an MXF file that they know and understand what the restrictions are. Now in this situation, I'm going to go ahead and choose, again, just sort of a starting preset here. I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, something like GoPro Cineform. Let's go to the video side. And in this case, I'm going to deliver a ProRes file. So I'm going to go ahead and choose Apple ProRes 422. I'm going to click on Match Source for the rest of these options here because we want to make sure that we're matching the resolution, the frame rate, and everything out of the source files. And under Audio, this is where I need to make a couple of small changes. You'll notice if I scroll down here, there's a, an area called Audio Channel Configuration. And you'll notice by default it's showing Stream 1 is going to be a stereo stream for Source Channels 1 and 2. So by default, this QuickTime preset is only outputting the first two channels of audio. You follow? 
we need to actually set this so that it will output one and two, three and four, and five and six. So what I'm going to do here is click on this little plus. I'm going to add another stereo pair for three and four. And then I'm going to click the plus again and add another stereo pair for five and six. So now I'm getting three different audio streams, each one a stereo, uh, for outputs one and two, three and four, five and six. So I'll have voiceover, sound effects, and music. Once I do this, again, uh, really cool to save this as a preset for uh, use in the future. So I'll just come up here and click on Save Preset. We'll call this one Splits ProRes. And I'll go ahead and click OK on that. And so by setting this, making sure it matches the uh, channel designation that I have in my, uh, my timeline, I can actually export out these individual splits where I can get separate voiceover, sound effects, music, uh, separate language tracks if I was cutting multiple languages in the same sequence. Premiere can actually export out a QuickTime file with up to 32 tracks of audio. Um, so it's possible to split out the audio any way that you need. The other nice thing about the way Premiere works is while it does require this one-time setup, it's also extremely flexible. If I wanted to, I could change this sequence to eight channels just by clicking here dynamically and choosing eight channels. And I could go through and add the routing on this so that the dialog would also go out to seven and eight. I could change all of the sound effects to also go out to seven and eight, and I could change the music to go out seven and eight. By doing this, Premiere will create a mix of the sound effects, music, and dialogue on seven and eight, but still preserve the individual splits on one and two, three and four, and five and six. So a lot of flexibility in how you route the audio using the audio track mixer. And the best thing to do is set this up as a preset sequence so that you can easily copy and paste your edit over and just make sure everything matches up with the way your audio is organized in your, uh, in your tracks. If you're not quite as disciplined to put all the voiceover on a single track or a single set of tracks, something like that, it's not the end of the world. Usually it just involves kind of moving things around a little bit to make sure that the tracks in the sequence um, the clips that are on these tracks are the correct type of clip based on what you've labeled the tracks. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to Inside Hollywood's Cutting Rooms on the Adobe Creative Cloud channel for more Premiere Pro tutorials and cutting room conversations.